And now, please give it up for the first of our finalists, Liam Pitchford. <laughs> With mascot, Phoebe Cooper. And he's up against Paul Drinkle. With mascot, Ava Bates. Liam is 25 years old. He is ranked number one, has been playing table tennis since he was eight years old. Paul is 29 years old. He's ranked number two and has represented Team GB at the Rio Olympics. It was an all-team England semi-final to get here. Liam beat David Macbeth and Paul beat Sam Walker in an epic seven-game battle. It's the men's singles finals. Let's give it up for our finalists. So, Liam Pitchford, the final of the men's singles in the 2019 PG Mutual Senior National Table Tennis Championships here at the University of Nottingham in the David Ross Sports Village. And uh, he's up against the mighty Paul Drinkle. I've got Don Parker with me. And um, I also got Maria Sapsinos, if we can get a little word. How, how, how are you doing, champ? Yeah, I'm doing great, thank you. Yeah, I was uh, very happy right now. <laughs> yeah, you look cool as a cucumber after you won. You did it look like you weren't surprised to win? No, I was definitely very surprised. A lot of emotions. I didn't really know what to do. Celebrate, keep celebrating, cry. I wasn't really that sure. <laughs> <laughs> so if I, if I can ask you, Maria, we, we were talking about your tactics. When you won the semi-final, you half joked in the interview about how important it was to stay up to the table. And we thought you made a real effort to stay up to the table. Was that on your mind? I have to stay close. Yeah, definitely. Tintin's a very sharp player. She, she gets the angles very well. So if I'm not staying up close to the table, she'll just smash me off with her short pimples, really. So, yeah, very different tactics to the semi-final match. Still kind of the same, but, yeah, made a real, real effort to stay close to the table there. And you what did. we, for what we yet, found interesting was yeah, that we were, when you we were, were joking, lobbing, we you were actually won the points because you didn't do it all the time. Yeah, I know. You did well. You did well when you were away from the table. I know, I took my time as well. And I guess in some ways it's easier when she has short pimples because there's not much spin coming back when Denise is hitting it. And also, as a penhole player, she, doesn't, she can't reach the ball over her head so much. So to smash is easier, I think, for Denise or someone like that. So, yeah, not as much power coming through as before. So, yeah. But well done. It was a pleasure to watch you from up here. It was a Thank great you. game. And Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, very entertaining as well. Thank you. Yeah, it's fabulous. Don and I were joking, Maria. They were saying that um, of the last five rallies that you ended up lobbing and doing what you said you weren't going to do, you won four of those. Yeah, I know. that. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, I reckon, the moment, Tintin rushing a little bit, me getting on top of it. Um, and yeah, really, I'm just really, really happy. And I'm happy with the way I play, which always makes it better. It's nice to win, but when you win and you feel like you've played really well, then it's definitely much, much better. Great. Well, great to have you. Stick around, watch the match with us, and we'll come back to you, Maria. Well done. Senior National Championships. So men's singles now, Paul Drinkle and Liam Pitchford. Maria, who do you think is going to win this one? Is Liam just playing out of this world and more than Paul can handle now, or does Paul still have a chance? I think they've both got uh, a lot of experience behind them. Liam, at the moment, as, you, as most people know, has jumped up in the international rankings. So at the moment, his form is supposedly a lot higher than Paul's. But we'll see. Pitch They're to close friends, and they've known Lobo. each other a while. So we'll see. Great. Thanks, Maria. OK, I've got Dom with me. Don, do you go along with that? Yeah, no, I think I think they're two great friends. They're what? two great players. I think Liam's vein, rich vein of form over the last 12 months has been absolutely amazing. The players he's beaten, Marlong, he's one of the greatest players the world's ever seen. Um, Liam took him out. The greatest Dude. player oh. Europe has ever produced is probably Timo Ball. Again, Liam beat him. Harry Moto, the up-and-coming young Japanese player. His form has been phenomenal. So, yeah, I think we've got to say Liam... The slight favourite, but when Paul Three. played in the oh. semi-final against Sam, he was highly motivated. Yeah. And he's looking in physically 
in as good a shape as I've seen him for a while. So this could be a real ding dong. Uh, Paul Drinkle's won this title six times. Uh, he's in a very elite group in second One, place three. with Alan Cook and Dennis Neal. Yep. So if Paul Drinkle can win it, he would then be the second most capped yep. national, national champion, champion outright on his own, behind, yep. of course, the legendary Desmond Douglas. Uh, uh, which, which no one can catch. So other than Des, who's just phenomenal, 11 national titles, Paul here today could be the next best ever. Three, all. Oh. So nothing in it, both lads jostling and jumping in between the points, get themselves warmed up and ready. Three, four. I had oh. the pleasure of watching these two play together with Sam Walker in Kuala Lumpur in 2016 in the World Team Championships. And they got through to the semi-final, which was an incredible performance, Five, knocked three. out Germany, knocked out France, top European teams and we're so close to beating France in the semi-final. And what was so good to see is all three boys contributed significantly. Sam Walker played the one singles in the middle, um, but he, he won against Japan, Five, he won against four. Germany, he won other big games as well. So it really was a team performance, and it was almost like cometh the hour, the boys arrived, and they've been there at the top of the world now for the last three years, really. Yeah, well, there's been some great Four, stuff we've six. seen this morning. We saw some fantastic matches. Liam beat David Macbeth. And Sam Walker, who you just mentioned, Paul played and in the end overcame him in a final set thriller. So Sam getting to the semi-finals. Sam's been in the final before, Four, having beaten Liam seven. a couple of times. But today, it's the old guard, Paul Drinkle. And Liam, who's won it four times, did you say? Yeah, he's won it four times. So seasoned professionals, they know each other very Eight, well, they know four. each other's games very well. And maybe Liam just a little bit tighter around the net. And not so much the power winning, but the control around the net that's taken Pitchford to an 8-4 lead. And when you talk to the players from around the world, the one area they do have the utmost respect for Liam Pitchford, where they regard him as one of the best, if not the best, is his backhand topspin. 8-5 particularly sometimes when he's a, a yard, two yards away from the table, just phenomenal power. Yeah. Joy! Oh. Six, eight. Short play again, opens up, and then the Six, big bombs. Nine. Well, you've got to say going to form. Ten, six. And that one attempted very, very fast service to the crossover. Just off the end. I like to think from Liam's point of view, he'd already run around and had his forehand ready for that one. So not successful for Paul there. 11, six, and that's the first game, game to Pitchford. Liam Pitchford. So going with the form book, Liam having beaten such fantastic players over the last 12 months, beaten many of the top players in the world, Mar Long included, Dmitry Ofterov included. Uh, Maria, you've really seen him improve over the last 12 months. Yeah, definitely. Uh, a lot of the tournaments he's uh, competed at internationally and played, I've been there, watched him, and yeah, his form has risen a lot. I don't know if he's changed his practice. I think he moved from Sweden to Copenhagen, so I think maybe a change in his practice. And yeah, he's, he's really competing with the top in the world. Thanks, Maria. Yeah, he's in Copenhagen now, as from last July, with his girlfriend, Agnes. And uh, it's a smaller group than it was when he was uh, living and training in Sweden, he says. But very individualized, very professional. They support each other, help each other's top games out to uh, get to the top game. in the world. Drink hard to serve. And uh, oh. seems to be paying dividends. Paul was struggling to hold on to that one, Don. Yeah, he, he didn't seem to have the same fire that he had in the semi-final against Sam Walker. There's a lot of respect between these two. They play together. They were great friends. And... I think sometimes when you go up against each other, it's just a little bit harder. One, certainly, oh. 
Pitchford played very well that first game. Yeah, Paul's going to have to get fired up now. Two, one. Created a little bit of history at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Did um, Paul Drinkle with his wife, and they won the mixed doubles. And Paul and Joe. Yeah. Paul and Joe, the uh, Commonwealth gold medalist in Glasgow. Not many husband and wife teams can claim that. A mixed doubles gold. One, three. A few sports that have mixed doubles at the Commonwealth Games. Squash. Badminton, table yeah. tennis. Yeah. Well, in the next generation, you might have a, uh, a mixed doubles drinkle team again. Two, three. Brother and sister with young Dougie. I think he's about age three. And Bonnie, that's younger sister. So Paul and Joe bringing up the next generation, hopefully, of good table tennis players. Four, two. The Drinkle family have been incredibly supportive of Paul during his career. They're all here, mum, dad, sister. And then on Joe's side, her mum and dad are here. Obviously Joe. Dougie and Bonnie. It's a full team turnout here in Nottingham for the Drinkles, which is great to see. Yeah, in the hotel last Two. night, I said hi, Paul invited us over and we had, a, we had a chat. I think there were 11 of the family all together. Great with the young kids. Lovely to see Joe. It's a great community, the table tennis circuit. That's a great flick from Liam. Paul's hanging in there. Maria Sapsino style. Two, but six. not enough against Liam Pickford there. See, Leah, uh, Paul gets pushed away from the table, hangs on for the first one, hangs on for the second one, but the third one, too much to cope with. You win some, you draw some. A lot of good short play, and then when it opens up, it opens up like a flash. It's a problem, isn't it, when you just keep the ball on the table against Pitchford, he's just going to pick you off with that power. And that opening backhand topspin there, very short shot, but he generated so much speed. He did. 7-3. That one, air shot. He's just trying to clip the one millimetre on the back and top of the ball. So tiny, tiny margins. Very easy to miss the ball altogether when Eight, you're trying to get that three. much spin with that fast a bat. We measured about 95 miles an hour on the bat on contact for a big shot. That's a fast moving arm. Four, eight. Just the fact they're able to play one shot, recover and play another shot done these days at these speeds with the, the modern rubbers and the modern training methods just amazing. It was interesting. In, I, I went to Alicante to the European Championships at the end of last year, and Paul was actually elected onto the European Athletes Commission. So Four, he's obviously nine. a voice now talking on behalf of the players yeah. at the highest level. Yeah. So he's obviously looking to put something back in to help the future players to get the structures right. Yeah, that's great to see. Fast serve down the line didn't work. That's gone very high. Oh, my word. How did that go on the table? Went for the big one Ten, to try and recover. Four. But six game points to Liam now. Look how high this went. He knew he was in trouble. One thing to do. And that went on. He didn't win the point. He deserves half a point for getting <laughs> that lob on. He had a chance with that forehand, didn't he? He got round. Yeah. He, he got a good swing at that ball. Went for the big four. one. So Maria can watch that one. She needs to come in with the big bombs after an even higher lob. Maria. Yeah, I think if uh, if I was uh, playing against Liam, I think I wouldn't stand a chance. So I, I do feel for Paul, even though he is a boy as well. So he can <laughs> he can match him in power maybe. So <laughs> I'm not quite yet that there yet with uh, matching Liam Liam smash and getting it back on the table. <laughs> the best point of the championships for me was the point where you switched hands. There was a rally against the knees where you were right, obviously right, and then all of a sudden you couldn't reach it. You put the bat and you joined the Andre Grubber class at that point. I think a lot of people will uh, say that that's my, my little trick shot that I like to do. I do it sometimes in training, but also some other people might say it's a very lazy manoeuvre I do. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, just making sure the ball was on the table. And I think, yeah, a lot of people have recognised that point. I think it's all over social media at the moment. <laughs> you won the point as well. So, and again, great entertainment.
So you fight to win the point when you've got the advantage and you're close. You fight to win the point when you're stuck away from the table. You put in the lights if you have to. You go for the big shots from away to get yourself back in. Anything to win a point. These players will almost die to get back into a rally or to win a point. That's a fast shot from Paul. So much acceleration in the bodies here. And they're geeing themselves up, keeping the nervous system really sharp. Backhand to backhand, look at the rate Two of play. Blocks. That's about three shots per second between them. Amazing speed to control the ball at that pace, just unbelievable. Ball just seems a little bit more revved up at the start three of this third game, good to see. Yeah, well you said he should have started that way. He didn't seem to, did he? No, he seemed a bit quiet at the beginning. Maybe he didn't want to G Liam up. Love. And it's a, again, it's a fine margin. You know, you can't afford to lose control with the aggression. But you've got to, you've got to get your, what they call the physiological arousal level, just right. Just psyched up enough and not being over psyched that you lose your mind. Well done, Paul. Oh, Ooh, nearly. One, he went from one side of the court to the other. That's seven metres across. Look at Paul's footwork here. Wider the forehand, gets that one. That one's even wider, and then down the other side. Five, one. Well, Paul's zooming, five, one up. First of four games. And serving. Two points here would be good, Don. Seven one would be lovely. With the serve. But Five, no, you got caught two. in that backhand to backhand rally, which I think you think is bread and butter for Liam Pitchford. Yeah. But I, I also think this if if Paul Paul has to win this game, I can't see him coming back from three nil down. But he's yeah. in a strong position now, six two. two six. Lovely banana flip. You can see exasperation on the face of Liam Pitchford. Put it onto the top of the net and not on the table. Two that one seven. missed by all of two centimetres, but has put Drinkle even further ahead in this third game. Paul's making a game of this one. He's not going to let Liam, now the number one, run away with this. He's seven, lucky there, Liam. Three. So, six times champion, Paul Drinkle serving. Four times champion, but now the number one, Seven, Liam Pitchford, pulling back in this third game. Best of seven. Just has to be careful here, Paul. Liam's just beginning to get his form back in this third game. Let. Seven, four. I just get the feeling this is a very, very big point. Packed house. Spectators loving it. Five, seven. Well, five, seven and serving for Pitchford. Has the best of Paul Drinkle been at the start of this third game? Will we see more from him? It's a fearful thought what Liam can do to you if you're not right on top of your game. Oh. Six, seven. That's absolutely fantastic stuff from Liam Pitchford. Time out. Good call, and that's I think, enough. by Paul. Yeah, enough, yeah, enough of that from Paul. He's called a timeout. Get 60 seconds, and he's going to get the advice from the important people. Oops. That's uh, Dougie and Bonnie. <laughs> they've just His made two a quick, kids. A quick, and they've a made quick a exit of yeah. Dougie and Bonnie. But, uh, yeah, no, good call by Paul. He's just lost three, four points on the run. He needs to break the momentum that Liam's generating. And what better? Let's have a one-minute break. And let's start all over again. Paul taking his time. Again, Paul without coach in the corner. Yeah, he's on his own. 
likes to think it through himself. In fact, at the recent European Top 16 in Montreux, I believe Paul went out as Liam's coach. That's right. That's right. Super coach. So great rapport between these two players. And you can tell the way, the way that they're playing the match. They know each other Six, so well. Seven. They know the, each other's intentions. Makes for some great rallies. But at the moment, Paul not supporting Liam. He's got to put him down in this game. As Don was saying, 3-0 down against Liam would be dangerous. Oh, seven all. And he's back to square at 7 all, Liam. Well done. But it's, it's, it's the way this. if he loses this game, he knows he should have won this game. 7-2, was he, or something yeah. like that? Seven. I think it might be 7-1 seven even. 7-1 seven even, yeah. 7 all. Such is the pressure from the lead from Brimmington. Classical backhand down the line from Liam, but Paul seven. absolutely saw that coming. Blitzed it across the diagonal twice. So good from Paul there. Took the switch, beautiful, across court twice. Great stuff. Liam couldn't get back in position. That'll give Paul some heart. That's a good length return from Liam. Just into the body, Paul ended up playing in a very cramped position, we'll see on the replay. Yeah. He was actually leaning backwards as he played that shot. You can still do it, but it's not the best for a, to keep control. Liam looks focused and relaxed. Eight, nine. That will help Paul. It's an edge ball. Nothing Liam can do about that one. So one more here will give Paul Drinkle two game points. Just touch the edge. Is that a lifeline for Paul Drinkle? Great short return from Paul. Nine. Got stuck oh. in the back end of back end again. Tried the switch to get out of it. Just a little bit too long. Nine all, but Drinkle has the serve. New ball from assistant umpire Kim Mudge. In with the forehand, into the crossover. How did Liam get that first one back? Nine. But then the big bombs from Paul to get it wide of Liam's backhand. Big forehand and then wide. Classical. Not a lot that Liam could do about that. It was so well executed by Paul. Game point for 2-1 down. Better than love three. He's in with the backhand, Paul. And he's got off the end and he's cheesed off with that. Just missed it. He knew, he knew that that was a good opportunity to take the third game. And I must say, I've not seen Paul, I've not seen Paul do that before. <laughs> just just frustration. Yeah, exactly. He was just frustrated. Yeah, he's back and keen. Ten all. Good banana Ooh. flick on the Ten, backhand from 11. Paul. But in the backhand, the backhand, Liam is... As expected, Don, winning most of the backhand and backhand exchanges. He just has such a good wrist action on that backhand. Mm. It can generate so much speed or spin if he brushes the ball. Yep. You know, the, the top foreign players talk about Pitchford's backhand, so it's clearly on their radar. Yep. Oh, what a great, well, at the very, very last game. minute, Pitchford. Liam Pitchford goes to play it short, pushes it long. The first one I think he's done this whole game, and that gives Liam with a very, very intelligent return of serve, a 3-0 lead, first of four games. He's one away from taking his fifth senior national championships. What a great ball that was from Liam. So watch some highlights, and uh, you've got to think about where these guys come from. So Liam, Brimington, and Derbyshire. And... Uh, some great play. They've been part of the system for a long time. Maria's alongside us. She's been part of a good system for a long time. But uh, all your work in Reading and all the, the female players that have gone before you that have been so strong from your area have, have enabled you to do this. You've got Karen Witt, Alison Bro, Sue Collier. So many players from that era and from, uh, from your club. Have they laid the foundations for you to do what you've done? Yeah, I think so. I was very fortunate that I had... Um some female role models, especially Ali. Um, she's been there cool. since I first started as yeah. regional coach and everything. So yeah, it's been a real help. And yeah, I like having Ali here to support me as well. It's really great. Yeah. 
Ali Gordon, bro, and Mandy Smith. Saying, there's just loads Fourth of them. Game. I can't name them all. Drink hot surf. Love all. So these clubs build the basis for foundations for elite performance, which Maria has climbed on the back of. And these lads are as well in the men's Love final. One. And now Drinkle with everything to do. How do you win four games on the trot against world number 17, Liam Pitchford? One, oh. It's interesting how the rankings change so much, isn't it? We had information that Liam was in the 20s the other day, but we now know the ITTF ranking list has changed. He was as high as 16 he in December. He was 16, yeah. But he's now, now. It does say, change, yeah. And the, the, the way they've changed the system, it's a bit more volatile now. So they do go up and down with the very, very recent results. Uh, have got a higher uh, weighting. But he deserves every... He deserves every point of that world rank 17, doesn't he, Liam, with his record over the, the last the year? The players he's beat. He's really jumped. I mean, he should be going to Budapest in a few weeks or months' time at the end of April to play in the world championships, knowing that he is capable of beating anybody. There's no There's one. There's a lot of players who can beat him, of course. Three, yeah. But two. he is, no one is capable safe. of beating anybody. Yeah. No one's safe against so Liam Pitchford. you know, winning the world singles title, it would be an incredible feat, but it's there. He's capable of beating anybody now, and he's demonstrated that. Yeah, it's possible to imagine it. Three, and Paul's four. Out, standing up well against it. Paul, world-class player in his own right. Being ranked in the 30s in the world. I think his career high was about 33. Mm. But certainly had the ability, or has the ability, to break into the top 20. Four, three. Maybe at 29 now, that's asking a little bit too much, but a very, very talented junior player. Yeah. And he works so hard. At the, I was talking with uh, Gavin Evans, who's Four, head coach three. at Grantham, Grantham College. And uh, he was talking about his days with, uh, with Paul. And when Paul was 17, he played more games on the international circuit three, than any five. other player in the world. Competitive matches, 290 competitive games when he was 17 years old. So he's put the he's put the work in over the years and what has become the decades for Paul Drinkle. And he's still in there, three five and serving. Such a hard worker. Really Four, made the best of his five. talent. A lot of spin on the service there, that fast accelerating wrist, brushing the ball, ball then fizzing with spin. More spin than Pitchford thought. And again, Five, oh. that one with a little bit of top spin. So watch the way he just catches the ball there. Backhand to backhand. Five, Liam's six. won a lot of those, but Paul was completely comfortable in that one. And the sound of the ball these days, so fast, it's like a drum roll, back end to back end attack. Six, oh. They've all been watching and emulating possibly the world's best, Ma Long, back end to back end counter. Liam's followed in those footsteps, so has Harimoto of Japan. And now these backhand to backhand rallies are so fast. Technically, I think possibly faster in the women's game than, oh, the, than six, the men's game, seven. especially with the new Japanese players. So quick over the table. So Paul still geeing himself up. He plays well when he's psyched up, doesn't he? If anything, Liam trying to keep himself seven. calm. That was a unforced error from Liam there by his high standards, I hasten to add. Mm. A lot of spin on the ball, but it was a good opportunity for Liam to make a winner. Seven all though. Pitchford now with his two serves. Good top spin Eight, down the line. Seven. There's one of the two. Just held back a little bit, just went for control. Good placement, deep on the Drinkle side of the table. Eight. Oh. Misses the backhand flip from the forehand side. It's kind of in the crossover. Decided to go across to play the backhand. 
quite common these days to do that. Eight all. Paul Drinkle, last chance to take a game. Serve, short touch. Into the back and the back and another back and the back and exchange won by Paul Drinkle. Is it turning around now? That gives Liam something to think about and worry about. What was drink, uh, Paul, Paul struggling on the back end of back end? What was Liam's bread and butter is now anything but. Paul. All goes Nine. for the flick and oh. Paul's normally so good at that. And now, of course, at this crucial business end of the fourth game, Pitchford has the advantage of his serves. So slight favourite at this point in time. Paul sometimes makes that flick so well. But nine all, two points away from victory for Pitchford. If he can convert these two serves. Joy! No, nine, not on the first ten. one. At least it'll go to Juice. But now, game point to Paul Drinkle. Ten, oh. <laughs> but it was a brave return, wasn't it? Yeah, it he was. doesn't play safe. He, he went was. for the flick out wide to the forehand. Pitchford's got a great forehand, <laughs> but he's not afraid. Let's flick out wide. Yeah, and Paul has to dry his forehand now, forehand side of his bat now. Get the perspiration off his bat, make sure it's completely dry. Ready to spin serve. Control again from Liam. Oh, well, well, well. Who would have thought? That, wasn't, wasn't that a fantastic low chop, though, Don? Yeah, chop. He chopped the ball, didn't yeah. he? He improvised. He was a like a millimetre over the net. Fantastic shot under pressure. Well played, Paul. Gives him another game point. Cool. And that was a well oh. placed serve from Pitchford. Into that, you keep talking about, we don't keep talking about <laughs> it, but you mentioned the crossover, the crossover point. But it is yeah. such an important part of the table to exploit mm. that area. Players not sure whether to play backhand or forehand. So both players missing backhands from the crossover around the net. Twelve, eleven. First match point of this contest. There's Dougie. Don't look too worried, does he, with the bag of Chris? He's, he's quite happy. Dougie, I think, yeah, he thinks Paul's still got a great chance. But uh, little Dougie Drinkle still thinks his dad can win. And there's 13, another flick off 11, the end. Four game games to zero, but a very Pitchford. tight one. Pitchford but wins. clearly Four games. a victory Still there for the rising star, which is Liam Pitchford. He has now won this championship five times against Paul Six. The crowd loving that match. But in the end, a clean sweep for a very, very happy Liam Pitchford. John, the coach, done a great job. Keep supporting there. So, in the end, Maria, a clear victory for Liam. Yeah, it was 4-0, but um, I'm not. I wouldn't say that it was uh, that easy for him. At the end, I think he got very clever with his serves. Uh, Paul made a, quite a few unforced errors, I thought, throughout the match, going for risky shots. That okay, if they go on, they're they're brilliant. But uh, in a match like this with Liam. I think you've got to play a little bit safe and make sure that the consistency is there, really. But, yeah, well done for Liam. Thanks, Maria. It's been great to have you with us. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, yeah, just a couple of errors from the Paul Drinkle side. But they have been racing around, doing some amazing stuff together. It's been a real treat to watch it. And that was what I thought was the shot of the championships, was the return of serve from Liam at game point when he pushed it long for the first time in that game. Very intelligent, very well done. And then after that, some fantastic exchanges, but then a wonderful 4-0 victory. Let's have a chat though with Paul, our gallant runner-up, and he's with Harry now. Paul, congratulations on getting to the final. Unfortunately, couldn't quite make it all the way to the end. How are you feeling after that? Yeah, I'm, I'm obviously disappointed to lose. I don't think um, I got my game and, and things going today. And Liam played a strong game and, you know, kept his level very well throughout the game. And the last two sets were obviously uh, very important for me. Um, didn't manage to nick one. And, yeah, he played solid all the way through. And congratulations to him.
Now, if I'm right thinking, that's the first time you've been in a final together since about 2015? Possibly, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. But. Well, so what's it like? You obviously play with him, playing against him. It's very difficult to get... Though, can you read him quite well and he understand his game? Yeah, I think we know each other very well and, like you say, quite often, naturally, you know where the ball's going and things. Um, just today, I, I didn't feel I, I got my game, you know, and put my game to him enough and, you know, that's what he did to me and that's, that's why he won. Well, commiserations, but well done for getting to the final. Thank you. Cheers. Liam, huge congratulations. You've won last year. You've won it again. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. You know, it's always nice to, to end as the winner in a national, national title. So uh, that's five now. So catching up with Paul. So, um, yeah, I'm just, just happy to win. What were you thinking going into this game? Did you have, do you have a set out plan every time you go and play or is it just gauging it as in the moment? I just tried to gauge it in the moment, really. You know, we know each other so well, so we know each other's games in and out. And um, I know how much of a, an amazing player Paul is. I've seen him demolish some of the world's best players. So I knew if I gave him a chance, um, he'd, he'd take it. So I had to try and stay on top. And the third set for me was really important, coming back from 7-2 down. I think that winning that sort of changed, changed the, you know, the way the match could have gone. And yeah, I'm happy to, to end it 4-0. Well, massive congratulations once again. You're the winner. Well done. Thank you. Cheers. Pitchford 2019 senior national champion. Four games to zero. John Davis there, satisfied in the corner. I bet he's absolutely exhausted, Don. Yeah, it's I bet he is. He not easy to watch, is it? No, no. And I think sometimes when you're actually in the corner coaching as opposed to playing, it's tougher because you can't. As you said earlier, it's the player who does the work and wins the game or loses the game on the table. You hopefully do your best to steer them in the right direction. And that can be more stressful because you know they've got to do it. So every credit to the coaches who've been here. They've all stuck at their job. The play this weekend has been absolutely tremendous. I think we've seen some great games. Uh, and it's just a credit to all the players here. It's been a pleasure working with you, Colin. You too, and Don. Thank I look you. forward to coming back next year. Yeah, we'll do it over again. We'll see if uh, Maria can hold on to her women's singles championships and win it a second time, prove it's not a flash in the pan, beating Tintin Ho. Um, and it's always a delight to come back. Over the last few years, we've had Drinkle, Pitchford and Walker um, consistently in the semi-finals. Some new, new players coming through. David Macbeth making, a, making the semi. Um, strong player as well. Uh, some great doubles games, some, some games going to the wire, three games all, two games all in the uh, women's doubles, for instance. So we've witnessed some great matches. We're going to have a presentation if you're going to stay with us uh, for the men's singles championship. So we'll, uh, we'll have the presentation shortly. Paul will receive his silver medal and Liam will collect for the fifth time his men's singles gold for this championship. And then they'll be preparing for international championships again after this. Juniors preparing for the Italian Junior Open later on in March. Let's all go. Some big events to come. And uh, it's, it's been great. So thank you, Don, for being with me. And we're going to go down to Harry and the presentations. Can you please give it up for the runner-up in the men's single final, Paul Drinkle. The medals will be presented by Sandra Deaton, Chair of the Table Tennis England Association. And can you please welcome your winner, Liam Pitchford.
and the trophy will be presented by Mike Perry, CEO of PG Mutual. So, national champion Liam Pitchford delighted, jogs off with the spoils. And that brings us to the close of a wonderful finals day at the Senior National Championship, sponsored by PG Mutual. Great to see you. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We hope you've had a great day with us, and we look forward to more championships in future, and, this, and we'll do it all again next year. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.